All right, so this screencast is for the Hi Mom, I'm Home reading in Lesson 11.10 of 7th grade Social Studies. Let's take a look. Hi Mom, I'm Home. A growing number of 20-somethings use moving back in with their parents after college. Meet the boomerang generation. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and get started. Let's say you're about to graduate from college with a degree in literature and you owe $44,000 in student loans. You're not sure what you want to do for a living because there are endless career possibilities out there, but none of them seem as fulfilling as you think they'd be. Meanwhile, you have a low wage job at Home Depot that won't help you pay off your debt. What do you do? This was the dilemma faced by Monica Navarro during her senior year at the University of California, San Diego. She ended up following a path that a growing number of young people are taking. She moved back in with her parents. It wasn't easy. Returning home meant living in her old, old room and relinquishing some of her freedom. Relinquishing means to give something up. While working at Home Depot often made her feel like she was letting her family down. I was definitely, I definitely was of the mindset, oh, a college degree is going to be my ticket to get a job. I thought it was the key to everything, says Navarro, 25, who still lives with her parents in Escondido, California. As soon as I was getting to that graduation mark, I realized that it was half the battle just getting the degree. Today, one in three people between the ages of 18 and 34 live with their parents, and 60% of all young adults receive financial support from them. That's a big increase from a generation ago, when only one in ten young adults moved back home and few received financial support. One of the main reasons why this is happening is the economic recession that hit the United States in late 2007. Since then, the number of young people who make up this so-called boomerang generation, 20 and 30-somethings, who move back home has increased significantly. Today, one in four recent college graduates are unemployed or underemployed which means they're earning smaller paychecks by working part-time or in jobs that don't require a college degree. And they face the highest debt burden of any graduating class in history. See graph. Students graduating in 2014 have an average student loan debt of $33,000, up from $9,300 in 1993. Longer childhoods. The result is young people becoming economically independent much later in their lives. In 1968, a vast majority of 20-somethings had moved out of their parents' homes. More than half were married. But by 2007, before, ha or before the recession even began, fewer than one in four young adults were married, and 34% relied on their parents for rent. There's some evidence that this greater dependence on parents is a natural progression, given the names in which or the manner in which modern society treated its children. For most of recent recorded history, children began working by age four, typically on a farm, and were working full time by ten. The ride the tide began to turn in the US in the nineteenth century, when school attendance started to become mandatory. By 1918, all American children were required to attend at least elementary school. By the turn of the 20th century, child labor laws, which set standards for the age at which children could be employed, what kind of jobs they could do, and for how many hours, started emerging. The result was fewer young children working. As the United States grew wealthier, childhood expanded along with it. Eventually, teenagers were no longer considered younger, less competent adults, but rather older children who should be nurtured and encouraged to explore. Jeffrey Jensen Arnett, a psychologist at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts, sees boomerang kids as the continuation of the centuries-long trend. Returning home, he says, is also a rational response to a different economy. 
It doesn't necessarily mean they're lazy, Arnett says. It's just harder to make your way now than it was in an older and simpler economy. Starting in the 1980s, machines and computers began taking over thousands of jobs in factories and later offices, and more jobs were outsourced abroad to lower wage workers. The labor market has became, become increasingly competitive. Today, it's even more so. Fewer jobs are available for recent graduates. A college degree is still an advantage, but no longer offers a guarantee. In a way, a degree has, is the expensive price of admission to the workforce. Young people now need to learn skills before they get a job, which often means unpaid internships. At the same time, work is no longer seen by middle class youth as a way, as a means of earning money to put food on the table. It's viewed as a defining part of their identity. They want it to be meaningful and enjoyable. That's why, faced with a competitive job market, along with the seemingly endless possibilities available in the search for a rewarding career, young people are taking longer to figure out their paths. For them, sleeping in a twin bed under some old Avril Lavigne poster isn't a sign of giving up. It's an economic plan. Eric Coran moved back with his parents in Wahoo, Nebraska in 2013 during his last semester of college. Coran had more than 19,000 in student loans and a degree in history and religion from Midland University in Fremont, Nebraska. But he didn't have a clear idea of what he wanted to do with his life. One thing he did know, without a stable job, he couldn't afford to live by himself. Moving back in with his parents while juggling odd jobs has allowed him to pay off almost half of his loans and figure out his next career move. Karan is now applying to graduate school and studying Arabic to make his resume stronger. Most of the time, I don't think living at home is a sign of failure as much as a cost-cutting decision, says Karan24. It's a temporary arrangement to plan ahead. But there is a social stigma attached to moving back home with mom and dad. 20 and 30-somethings are often sneered at as lazy, overgrown babies who are unable or unwilling to be independent. $130,000 in loans. Even some boomerangers fight feeling sorry for themselves. Gabriel Gonzalez moved back home in Suffern, New York after graduating from the School of Visual Arts in New York City with a degree in graphic design. Currently working as a graphic designer and with about $130,000 in student loans, the 23-year-old finds it hard to live at his mom's. I don't see it as good or bad. It's just stagnant. I obviously would like living on my own so I could have my own freedom, he says. I try not to think about it too much. Because if I think about my debt too much, it's going to be like, I'll never get out of this. But there's evidence that things are looking up. The United States con economy is improving, and the unemployment for 25 to 34-year-olds fell to 7% in 2014 from 9% in 2012. The rate is lower for college graduates than high school graduates, and on average, college graduates earn 60% more than people with only a high school degree. That means that some boomerang kids are finally moving out of their parents' homes. But others, like Navarro from California, are staying put. After graduating from college, she realized she wanted to be a librarian. Commuting from home, she's studying to get a library technician certificate at Palomo, Palomar College in San Marcos, California. She still has most of her student loans to pay off, but she works at two local libraries and says she earns enough to afford to live on her own. She just doesn't want to. It's not a failure anymore, it's a choice now, she says. I think having the personal knowledge is enough for me. Even if people know outside that I'm still living at home and I'm a college graduate, it's okay with me now. So that concludes the reading portion. Go back to the lesson for today and finish up your assignment.